You know what's really funny for me is that we actually made this very similar kind of video a month ago where we spoke about the New York Islanders winger Josh Bailey and whether or not he could be traded to either of the Detroit Red Wings or the Ottawa Senators. Well, it's a month after that video's publication and now we're taking a look at a piece written over here on TSN by Travis Yost as to whether or not somebody else who has been on the trade block could attend a Red Wings or a Senators training camp this upcoming season. So, we've been speaking a ton about the Vegas Golden Knights. It's actually kind of sickening to me, to be honest, how much we're talking about Vegas on this YouTube channel, despite the fact that I really don't like Vegas because they eliminated my Vancouver Canucks in the second round of the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. But... Max Pacioretty, Jonathan Marcheseau, Marc-Andre Fleury, these guys being on the block, that's a big story. It's why we've been talking about every single Pacioretty thing that's been coming out. But we have been kind of ignoring the Jonathan Marcheseaus and the Fleurys of the world, too. Which is where this article by Yoast comes into play. Take a look at this. The Golden Knights cap crunch is a potential boon for rebuilding teams. Now, boon, that's an interesting word. Let's go over and define what exactly boon is, a thing that is helpful or beneficial. So, how could a Golden Knights cap crunch help out some of these other rebuilding teams? Well, Yost goes over it and he talks about how the Vegas Golden Knights have some forwards who are indeed capable of being traded, who have been on that trade block, and who have been in these discussions. He talks about Max Pacioretty, but he also says that there is a lot of value in talking about Jonathan Marcheseau. On the Vegas situation in general, he says that the Vegas Golden Knights are not in a unique situation. There are a whole bunch of other teams who don't really have all too much cap space, so this is difficult to find an actual suitor for these somewhat valuable NHL wingers. This sort of difficult cap situation can also be a boon for teams who have kept their powder dry on the salary front. Most of the teams are in rebuilding situations. Though they may not expect to compete for a playoff spot in the 2021 season, their longer-term outlook grows favorably as the talent pool on the NHL roster increases. Perhaps the two most obvious examples of teams in this category are the Red Wings and the Senators. Here's the little kicker as to what sells Marcia so instead of a patch ready to these two hockey teams. A sniper like Patches would improve any team, but he's more expensive than Marcia so, and more importantly, he's three years older. A player like Marcia so could easily be embedded onto these rebuilding rosters and immediately improve team talent levels without clogging up a roster spot long term. Could we see a Jonathan Marcheseau trade to either the Sens or Detroit? Jonathan Marcheseau is a 29-year-old left-wing, right-wing player. He plays on either wing. He's a small guy, 5'9", 174 pounds, but he's always been a guy that I've been a really big fan of ever since his days with the Tampa Bay Lightning after getting called up from the Syracuse Crunch after being a point-per-game player over there back when he was in his mid-20s, I believe. I was always a big fan of watching Jonathan Marcheseau do his thing. Eventually, he went over to the Florida Panthers, was really good over there. 30 goals, 51 points in 75 games, and it got to the point where the Panthers were like, Hey Vegas, we know you guys are new in this league, and we know you're going to take a player from our team. But we really want you to take Jonathan Marcheseau, for some reason, more or less. So we'll give you Riley Smith as well. If you decide to take Jonathan Marcheseau and the Vegas Golden Knights are like, yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll take Marcheseau, who was a 30-goal guy for you guys and who is only, what, 26 years old on our brand new hockey team, as well as getting Riley Smith too. Riley Smith at the time in 2016-17 was a 37-point player who eventually became a point-per-game player in the Vegas Golden Knights system, and Marcia So had 75 points. So, yeah, Florida, you guys did a great job there. Just saying. Nowadays, though, Jonathan Marcia So had 47 points in 66 games with the Golden Knights this previous season, and in the postseason, 10 points in 20 games played. I will say, Marcia So wasn't really all too effective against the Vancouver Canucks, so even though I did watch the majority of the Vegas games in the playoffs, that's just my little tidbit right there saying that this guy was deemed irredeemable against Thatcher Demko. But taking a look at the contract right here, Jonathan Marcia So was signed to a 5 million AAV contract 
for what was seven years or six years, I believe. Yeah, six years. And it was signed back in 2018. So it goes on until 2024, where he'll be making $5 million a season. Till then, he'll be 33 once this contract expires, which is about the same age as Pacioretty is now. So whether or not this kind of guy could help out a team long term like an Ottawa Senators team or a Detroit Red Wings team is yet to be seen, but it's highly probable. The article here on TSN.ca goes over both the Senators and the Red Wing situations. It talks about how Marcia So would instantly be one of the better wingers on the entire Ottawa Senators team if you take a look at the goals above replacement chart as well as the even goal scoring rates. Dadanov is better because Dadanov is really good. Funny enough, they're both from Florida, but it indeed is something to note how Marcia So is a player who would eventually just be really good. Another interesting point is how his 12 power play points would have been first on the Senators last year because the Sens power play was absolutely a disaster at 14%. We also had the Detroit Red Wings perspective, talking about how guys like Bertuzzi and Mansa are really, really good. How Marcia So is actually better than them, and if you take a look at the three year even strength scoring rates and the goals above replacement charts, but how the rest of the lineup really does need some work, and as a result, their rebuild is a little bit further down than Ottawa's is. But still, the Red Wings have a ton of prospects. There are a lot of really good guys Zadina, Berggren, Raymond. It also mentions in the article the impact players like these could have. And it concludes that a player like Marcia So would immediately move into the top six for both of these franchises, and quite frankly, it's not often a player of his caliber becomes available in this manner. This is where being opportunistic with cap space and knowing how to mitigate the risks associated with putting all of your eggs in the prospect basket can really put rebuilding organizations in a position of strength. The article concludes by saying that the Golden Knights can't take on any salary, and as a result, they're probably going to be looking for a cheaper replacement option and some future stuff. So prospects, picks, maybe a borderline NHL caliber winger who is NHL ready, and they'll be on their way because they don't have the cap space to continue on looking for players. Maybe they go out there and sign an Eric Halla again. Who knows? But it is indeed funny to look at, and if you want to take a look at a Senators Detroit Red Wings kind of fit with Marcia So, I think Yost kind of nails it on the head here. He would be a very good player for either of these organizations if he were to step in right away and contribute. Plus, he's only 29 years old. Actually, he's going to be 30 by the time the season starts because his birthday is December 27th. His contract goes on for four more years, and if you're getting 30, 31, 32, and 33-year-old Jonathan Marcia So suiting up for your lineup in the next few years, that could definitely help you out in the longer term. By the time guys like Stutzla and Zadina are full-time 20 goal scorers in the NHL, Marshall So still probably going to be around here and kicking it, cementing some of that chemistry that you're building on in the short term. But it is kind of funny taking a look at what a request could be if you're looking for a Vegas return, because we saw this with the Pacioretty stuff earlier. We spoke about this in the Pacioretty to the LA Kings video a few days ago, but... That video went over how apparently the Vegas Golden Knights would need to give up a first round pick or something, or a second to get rid of Pacioretty's contract, and that's not to disrespect Pacioretty, the guy's great, it's just the contract is big, and you're not going to avoid the fact that the contract is big, you're not going to be able to retain salary because Vegas doesn't have the space to do that, and for a Marcia so, who knows if that's even a possibility too. He's cheaper, he's younger, so he's a little bit more desirable in my opinion, but are you still going into these trade discussions with the same idea that says, oh, the Golden Knights are going to need to give up Marcia So and a first round pick and a second round pick or something in order to get a trade done with a rebuilding franchise. I'm not really too sure. Honestly, if I'm the one in the captain's seat thinking about what exactly it is I'm going to give up, if I'm Steve Eiserman, I'm thinking about a second or whatever, because, hey, you guys are getting a lot of free second round picks and thirds and whatnot from guys like Mark Stahl and all that, but, of course, there are other things to take a look at. As for the Sens, they built themselves up a really good prospect pool, they got a ton of guys, whether or not any of those are expendable is up to you, but... The option is there if you do see value in it. So talk to me in the comments about Jonathan Marsh. So also talk to me in the comments if you made it to the end of this video. DQ Blizzards, and I'm saying that because Jonathan Marcheseau, back when he was a youngin, was playing for the Seminaire Saint-Francois Blizzard in the QMAAA. So there's a nice little connection over there. Talk to me in the comments about DQ Blizzards. 
If you say that, you might get featured in the next video, but also talk to me in the comments normally about what exactly you think would be the situation for the Senators or the Red Wings if they acquired a Marsh. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Show. And bye. <laughs>